The story begins in the school where right now, some popular students are making their way through the hall and everyone is stuck seeing them walk. They are so popular that no one dares to approach them directly and the ones they are seen talking with are considered very lucky. So they are the celebrities of the school despite being the students. Everyone thinks that these two are dating but no one dares ask them because no one has the guts to. We get to know that the girl, Suzun, is the president of the student council and Kazuki, the guy, is the vice president. They make their way through the corridor and every class they pass by, students are forced to stop whatever they are doing and look at them. These two dating or not is the hot topic of the school because they are always seen together and there is no day where they are seen separate. Wherever you see Kazuki, you see Suzun and the other way around. Suzun is talking about what they are supposed to do as the members of the student council and Kazuki assures her that whatever she wants is here in his possession. Nothing can stop them from presenting the true and factual points to back up their argument and they are surely going to get what they want from the school. Our MC, Wasato is narrating all of this for us and in his opinion, no one has been successful in eclipsing these two in fame. There have been a lot of people getting fame out of nowhere but their popularity always dies down and these two again make their mark to the top. He knows even if these two are dating, no one would mind because they do make a great couple and no one will deny that ever. If I had this much effect on the school by just walking through the hall, I would be roaming around the school all day making people follow me around like sheep. But we have to face facts and admit that no one likes me. After getting to know about the fame of these two popular and somewhat brilliant students, we see the other side of the coin and we get an introduction to our MC. He is the student for whom you would not even use the word ordinary. If there was a word beyond ordinary, we can assign that to MC, and he is not so famous in the school. He is always forgotten, and no one even remembers sometimes that he is in the school. The normal run of the mill student. We see Usado saying goodbye to some of his friends, and they leave. It is raining quite heavily, so Usado wants to head home before it charges up its second phase. He is about to go in when he sees some birds on the ground helpless. Being the kind guy he is, Usado helps the birds, and this is one of the things he stands out because of. He does things people just ignore and do not think about like helping these helpless lonely birds. Doing this he goes inside to the locker room to get his umbrella but to his surprise and disappointment, someone takes his umbrella. The rain is nowhere near stopping anytime soon and it is already getting too late for him to be at school now. He takes a look and notices that there is an umbrella in the basket but he does not know who it is. Trust your intrusive thoughts and take the damn umbrella, my guy. But again, being kind and always looking out for others, he does not take the umbrella. He feels like he cannot just throw his burden on someone else and go home like this. He decides to wait for a bit and wishes something happens and the rain stops. Usado has always dreamed of having an extraordinary and fantastical life, but that just is not going to happen for him. These are the exact times when Usado wishes that he had some superpowers and that he could use some magic to get himself out of these difficult situations. After waiting a while, the rain does not stop and now the time comes when Usada must freak out observing the situation he finds himself in. He must go home now but the rain is stronger than before and he cannot go home without risking getting sick. He is looking at the sky hoping the rain will stop when Suzuna comes up to him, asking if he has a good reason to be at the school at this hour. He explains his reasoning but Suzuna knows he has not gone home because he does not have an umbrella on him. Usado knows this is the popular girl in the school and just talking to her is enough honor for him. She reminds him though that staying late is not endorsed and he would have to leave soon as is written in the rules of the school. Usado does know the rules but he also does not want to annoy Suzun so he wants to get out of her hair as quickly as possible. He lets her know that he can go home like this and he is about to leave when Kazuki comes up and stops him on his way. He knows Usado somehow and he tells him that if he does not have an umbrella, he can borrow it for today and return it tomorrow. The thing that shocks Usado though is that this famous student knows his name and he is acting friendly with him. Seeing his confused face, Kazuki knows what Usado is trying to figure out so he helps him. He tells Usado that he is from his class and that is how he knows his name. Suddenly it hit Usado that yes, this guy sure was from his class but still, his offering his umbrella to him is something he expected the very last thing from this guy. He accepts the umbrella and thanks him with a formal tone but Kazuki wants him to be cool and easy as they are class fellows. Usado loves and is confused about the way he is getting talked to. Kazuki wonders what should he call Usado, from his first name or the last. Usado returns the favor, telling him that Usado is fine if he wants to call him that. 
Hazuki tells Usado that they should walk home together if only they are the ones left in the school. Suzun also gets into this friendly interaction and lets Usado know that they should walk home together as it is almost fate that brings them together like this. She would also want to call him Usado if he does not mind. Well girl, take a look at his face and guess if he minds or not. It is like asking if you want the best ice cream or not. Yes I do, make it double if possible. They start their journey home together, and the first thing that Usado shares with them is that he finds it very surprising that Kazuki would be this friendly. Kazuki finds this interesting, and asks why he thought that. Usado knows they are very popular and the way they are talked about in the school, anyone in their shoes would have had their egos shot to the roof. The thing that surprises him even more is the way Suzune interacts with him. He thought that she would be the hardest to approach but she feels very chill and easygoing. Suzune hears this for the first time but Kazuki agrees with Usado. He knows that Suzune is at the top of her class in literally everything. And the plus point is that she is beautiful inside and out. She sure finds this undermining in some way, but Kazuki tells her that she always gives herself less credit than she deserves. This thought of them being very unapproachable does make Kazuki and Suzuun a little amazed, but they are not hearing these things the first time. Usado is just spewing out his thoughts and curiosity, and asks them if they are dating or not. This stops both of them on the spot and with a huge confused tone, they ask him why he thinks that. Why are these popular and overpowered characters this dense? He notices that he just stepped on something very personal that he should not have and tells them that he heard it in the school because this is what everybody talks about. Kazuki and Suzune let him know that they are not dating. The reason they are always together is because they are the members of the student council, that is all. Well this disappoints Usado but he figured this would be the case. Suzune sure took his question as a compliment though because this is a lot better than talking behind their backs and assuming things that are not close to being true. They continue their way back home but this time, Suzun has something she wants to ask Usado. She wants to know if he has thought about what he is going to do after he gets out of school. Usado was a little surprised by this question but he has not thought about it. Kazuki points out that she asked the same question to him as well a little while ago. Suzuna shares that she is interested in getting to know other people's plans for life after school because she has no idea. Every goal she sets, she achieves it in no time and this leads her very confused about her life after graduation. This concerns Kazuki because he never thought that of all people, Suzuna would be the one confused about this thing. Usado is forced to wonder if this is how competent people think about their lives. Suzuin adds that she finds this life very boring and sometimes she feels like she does not belong here. Usado and Suzune are not alike, but for some reason, Usado understands what she meant by this. He knows that exact feeling she feels. They are walking when Kazuki stops and looks confused. Usado asks him if something is wrong and he asks Usado if he also hears that. Usado does not hear anything but Kazuki tells him that he is hearing some kind of bell ringing. Suzun also starts hearing it and points out that it is getting louder and louder by the second. Our MC is left alone once again. A huge portal suddenly opens up beneath them, and this makes Usada wonder if this is a portal to another dimension or something like that. Hearing this, Suzun asks him if there are monsters and magic in that other world or not. Usada finds it very unlike Suzun, who would be excited about that stuff. Her knowing this stuff only makes her image in Usada's mind a lot more beautiful. They feel a rush running through their body, and they vanish with the portal, leaving their umbrella behind. Kazuki wakes up Usado, and he gets up, bewildered by what just happened to them. We see that our gang is at some kind of a castle, and right now, they are in the hall of the castle with the king and relevant people present as well. Usado wakes up wondering where they are, but Kazuki and Suzune have no clue either. The king sitting on his throne lets them know that he knows how they are feeling right now. He apologizes to them for making this happen, but he wants them to know that they did not have any other choice. Kazuki is mad and wants the king to explain everything right now. Seeing how he is talking to the king, the king's vassal explodes saying how dare he talk to his majesty like that but the king calms him down. King introduces himself. He is the king of the Lynch Kingdom and his name is King Layad. Suzuna cannot control her emotions seeing that this is an actual king and not some fake actor pretending to be one. Her reaction surprises Usado a lot, but he focuses on the matter at hand for now. Lloyd continues and tells them that there is a demon lord, and he invaded their kingdom once with his force, but the king emerged victorious after he fought back and sent away the demon lord and his entire force. 
The thing that concerns him is that the Demon Lord is much stronger than before now, and there is no saying what will happen if he decides to attack again. For this matter, the King needed some accomplished people such as them from other worlds so they could help them win this battle with the Demon Lord. Forget about the war and the battle. Suzun is melting over the fact that there is an actual Demon Lord in this world. Usado tries restraining her, saying that they are having a serious conversation right now, but this is out of her control now. Anyways, King lets them know that they were brought here through a ritual called the Hero Summoning, and he would love it if they helped him fight this Demon Lord. Kazuki does not need any of this and tells the King that they have families behind in their world, and they cannot just leave them like this. Saying this, he orders the King that he has to send them back right now because they are not summoned here with their consent. King tells him that he cannot do that because the ritual works in one direction and he cannot use it to send them back. Kazuki is furious hearing this and tells the king that he has to do something. Agitated, Kazuki takes a step forward toward the king and all of the soldiers get ready to take him out. Usado gets up and appreciates his anger for them, but he wants Kazuki to know that starting a fight here is not a solution. Kazuki is very angry, but he needs to calm down. He relaxes and the king comes forward, kneeling in front of them. He begs for their help and he promises that he will find a way to send them back in the near future. The heroes accept but Suzun has a question for the king. She knows that they are here to help him in some way, but why is he calling them the heroes? He does not know anything about them for now. Well see, the girl who performed the ritual comes forward and tells her that the summoning brings the people who are accomplished and are capable of things that no one is. She lets them know that before coming here, they heard some bells ringing, and that was the indication that they were the heroes. They understand, but it also reveals one thing, that Usada was not supposed to be here. He got dragged into this just because he was with them. He did not hear any bells ringing. This is a point to be concerned about, but Usada knows that he cannot undo what happened now. They are in a room where Welsi is about to measure their magical abilities using this crystal ball. Wasn't the crystal ball used for future telling and all that? These Anines have really changed this concept for good. Suzuna cannot help but feel very excited about her magical ability being measured. Kazuki on the other hand asks Usado if he is comfortable being here. Him being dragged into this must be making him very angry, but Usado is not. He knows getting angry for this is no use and he must be positive like Suzuna. He knows that he will find something to do here now that he is stuck here. Kazuki agrees with him, but they are looking forward to their abilities being measured. They really hope they are of some use, especially Usado. Welsi wants Suzuna to come forth first and put her hand on the crystal ball. She does and the ball starts shining bright yellow. Welsi explains that this yellow light indicates thunder magic and this cannot be perfect for Suzuna. Kazuki is up next and he comes, putting his hand on the crystal. The ball lights white for him and upon asking, Welsi tells him that this is the light magic. Suzun knows about this and tells him that he can use it to shoot lasers and make light swords out of it. Usado knows that Kazuki does not understand anything she just said but oh well. Well was it worth getting roasted by a girl for no reason. Up next is Usado and he is interested in knowing what kind of magical power he has, even if he has some. He puts his hand on the crystal and it lights green for him. He and the gang are excited to see a new color and they turn to ask Welsi about it but they look and see that Welsi is scared out of her mind, shaking like crazy. She has to tell the king about it, and saying this, she grabs Usado and runs to the main hall, toward the king. Going there, seeing Welsi painting makes the king curious, and she tells him that the power Usado showed is what he has to know. He sarcastically asks her if he got some dark magic or stuff like that, but his laughing face turns to a sweating shocked face right when she tells him that the crystal turned green. He cannot believe that he has that power, but Usado has no idea what they are so afraid of. He figures that his power is dangerous or something, but no one is telling him. King asks if there is any safe place for him or not. He wants Usado out of the castle right away, but we see some girl walking through the corridor of the castle, making her way to the main hall right now. Welsi asks the king if there is someone else with the same kind of magic as Usado and there is. The girl comes in, opening the door very dramatically. This is the girl with the same power as Argusado here, and this could not be worse timing in King's opinion. She comes in and then King looks really terrified of her being here. King thought her day was off today, but she is still here. Her name is Rose, and she is the captain of the kingdom's rescue team. She looks at Usado and asks the king about him. 
He avoids any difficulty saying that he is not one of the heroes but just an ordinary human being. Welsey tells Rose that heroes are in the other room and she would love to take her to them. She is leaving with Welsey when Usado asks the king about his magic as they have not told him still. Asking this, he says that he knows the crystal turned green and Rose hears this, stopping on her way out. Everyone knows that they are screwed and King tells Welsey to get Usado away from her. She uses her magic and takes Usado out of the castle in a bubble type thing. She takes him up in the sky, but Rose manages to get to him in time. She punches him to the ground and takes him away from the castle. In the crystal room, Suzuin and Kazuki get to know that Usado was just taken away by Rose, but they do not seem to find an issue with that knowing that Rose is the healing magic user. Weckley explains that healing magic users are very rare and Rose is one of them. She has been looking for another one, and now she has one. She is going to train him now to become her subordinate. She takes Usado home and introduces him to her subordinates. They greet him very terrifyingly but Rose kicks one away, saying that they are going to scare the newbie. They tell her that this is the way they greet someone and they are being very nice. I don't think they know what nice means. Usado is going to be trained by Rose herself and the subordinates tell Usado that her training is nothing less than hell itself. He goes to the room to sleep as this is his home. Rose on the other hand wonders how this kid is going to respond as he is a healing magic user from another world. In a world of wonders, we see an elite city that is protected by the walls from Titan or I don't know. And like every other elite city, there is this small hut that is mostly located at the border, thus our hero who lives in the forest seems traumatized, since he was hoping it was all a dream, but it looks like he is really in another world. Meanwhile, another guy is sleeping in his room while snoring. His snores are composing a symphony of questionable talent. On the other hand, some other fellows are coming to meet the guy. Therefore, a man who was cooking calls the guy and informs him that some fellows have come to meet him. The guy then comes outside to meet them. It appears a guy with red hair and a girl with black hair comes to meet him. They are also wearing the uniform of an academy. Seemingly, they are worried for Usado. Since they heard that, the guy was abducted. Usado apologizes to them for making them worry. He even jokes about it, that he is alive, but suddenly he remembers the incident with the green-haired girl. Funnily, he doesn't have a good impression of her, since the girl kicked the hell out of him. So now Wasato is sad that he is supposed to start the training from hell today, so he can't say how tomorrow will go for him. Seeing his reaction, his friend asks him if it's really that bad. Whereas, the girl notices that the guy looks intends to go through with his training. Hence, Wasato informs them that he wants to do it since he has nothing better to do and also he would like to be of some use. The girl then motivates the guy, saying they know he can do this. Afterwards, she determinedly tells him about their training, which will begin today as well. Then, she encourages him to do his best. Meanwhile, Aruku is watching them from afar, when suddenly a group of other guys come to him and happily offer him a tomato. Whereas, Usado is wondering what kind of cool training their heroes get to do. The guy even compliments the girl on her uniform, saying that it's looking pretty awesome. The girl seems happy with his compliment. Suddenly, the red-haired guy becomes serious and holds Ustado's shoulder. He then thanks him and seriously informs that he has finally made up his mind. Although Ustado seems confused, the guy then tilts his head towards the girl and calls her senpai. Hence, he tells her that he is going to do his best in this world. The girl also seems determined to do the same. After that, the guy and the girl go away from there with Aruku. Apparently, Aruku is carrying a fruit basket. Thus, he happily informs them that he has received some gifts. Meanwhile, Wasado is watching them from afar. It seems he knows that Kasuki is going through a lot, since he was suddenly brought to another world and told that he was a hero. And the same happened with the Inukami Senpai too. Therefore, he thinks that she must be going through the same. However, at that moment, the girl waves at him happily. Seeing her happy, he realizes that she is probably fine. Although the guy is determined to become strong enough to support them someday, out of nowhere, a green-haired girl makes her entry, and judging by Usada's expression, it doesn't look like they had a great past. Because boy, he was so not ready to see her. Seemingly, the girl asks him if the heroes already left, and did he enjoy his chat with them. Usado seems afraid of her, as he replies that he did enjoy his time. The guy is looking like he will shit in his pants. After that, he bows in front of her to show her respect. Hence, Rose tells him that it's not a prison, so he is free to see whomever he wishes. However, there is a twist in it that he can only do this. 
Whenever he is not training, seems like the guy is really afraid of her, as he agreed with her without missing a beat. Surprisingly, Rose throws a book at him, which the boy catches on time. She then tells him that it's a journal, where he should record his daily training regimen and how he feels about it, because it will be beneficial for him. After that, she tells him that they will start their training after breakfast. The girl then leaves from there. Meanwhile, the guy realizes that his training from hell has finally started. After some time, Usado is outside training with Rose. Right now, he is doing meditation and apparently, he is thinking about his friend's warning that this training would be hell, but the guy feels that it is easier than he had expected. Dude, people who celebrate early are more likely to face disaster. Anyways, the girl asks if he is feeling anything. The thing is the guy is holding both of his hands on his chest, and he is feeling some kind of warmth right there. Thus, Rose informs him that it's mana. And the next thing he needs to work on is drawing that out of his body. Usado doesn't understand how he will draw it out of his body. However, the girl reassures him that he will understand soon enough. So right now, he just needs to focus on sensing the energy. The guy then resumes his practice. After a while, Rose tells him to read a book. Nonetheless, the guy starts panicking because he can't read the language of this world. Thus, Rose ignores his complaints and tells him to just open the book. Usado seems doubtful, but because of the girl's command, he opens the book anyway. Surprisingly, Usado finds that he can read the book. Therefore, the girl reveals she heard that summoned heroes automatically have translation magic cast on them. Funnily, the guy thinks that the girl could have told him this sooner. Afterwards, Rose points at the map and shows him the Linger Kingdom along with Demon Territory. There, Usada notices they are both right next to each other's territory. Hence, the girl agrees with him and tells him that this is the reason why their kingdom has always become the demon's first target. Therefore, the girl advises him to read that book because it has basic information about the nations, different races, and demons of this world. The guy then starts reading the book. Meanwhile, Rose goes from there to give him privacy. After that, the boy feels that, if this is what the training is, then he should be able to handle it. Day two of training comes and it appears he has to run a lot today. Funnily, the guy is questioning his like decisions while running, since he didn't expect this from his magic training. Day three comes and even today he has running training. Apparently, he was forced to run until his muscles were so sore that he couldn't move. Afterwards, he becomes tired from running, so he stops for a moment. But funnily, Rose appears next to the guy and scolds him about why he has stopped. Hence, Usado scaredly tells her that he can't go on because his legs are done for. Surprisingly, Rose slaps hard Usado's legs and the green light comes out of her hand. The guy starts crying like a baby and he feels that the pain is multiplied cause he is already hurt. However, suddenly he realizes something and stops his tantrums. After that, he touches his legs and feels that the pain is gone. Rose then informs him that she has healed his sore muscles. I also want her this magic for my sore body. Funnily, Usado gets surprised about the fact that she can do this magic. Meanwhile, Rose scolds him to get back to running and even calls him a piece of trash. He's getting scolded worse than a child. The boy looks horrified that she calls him trash. Yet he still stands up to run. It seems like she is going to kill him today. Funnily, Rose tells him to run like he is going to die, since she will revive him if he does die. Hearing this, the guy feels that doesn't even make sense. However, Usada knows he can't say that out loud, so he decides to write this in his journal. Surprisingly, Usado has run for so long that even his shoes get torn. The fourth day comes and the guy has started training with other members. Therefore, the guy is running with them, but sadly everyone passes by him and leaves him behind. The other guys even mock him for his slow pace. Meanwhile, Rose scolds him for being a lap behind and even calls him a little bug. Usado is getting frustrated about this whole situation, he also wants to talk back, but funnily he again decides to write this in his journal. Day 5 comes, and Usado again runs all day. Even in the rain, the guy is doing his training. Rose notices that the guy is slowing down, so she tells him to speed up. After a moment, Usado's foot suddenly slips and he falls in the mud. Funnily, he looks very pissed at the girl that he even calls her cold-hearted. Therefore, Usado decides to write about her in his journal. Apparently, he is breathing heavily from the exhaustion. Surprisingly, the guy notices that the green light is coming out of his hand. He thinks that maybe it's the light of healing magic. However, he questions whether he really needs it. All this time, Rose has been watching him from afar. The seventh day comes in funnily. Rose is kicking the guy's ass like a football. Even the boy realizes that he had never gotten his ass kicked like this before. 
Apparently, the seventh day Usado ran again until he thought he would die. After that, the girl kicked his ass while the guy is still in the fright of the kick. The girl comes to him and tells him that since he has pissed her off, she is raising the level of difficulty. The guy gets scared and thinks, maybe she found out that he was dissing her in his journal. However, he remembers that she can't read Japanese. Surprisingly, Rose picks up the guy and throws him again like a ball. Thus, she tells him to start running. Funnily, Usado has promised to call her a vicious muscle-bound gorilla in his journal. The eighth day comes and the boy doesn't learn since he again gets kicked by the girl. After that, the ninth day comes. It seems that Usado still doesn't learn, since is getting kicked hard by the girl. Apparently, on the ninth day, the boy thinks that a few days ago, he questioned the need for healing light, but now he feels that he is gonna die and his ass is also gonna die. Surprisingly, Usado notices that his whole body's pain has gone and green healing magic light is coming out of his hands. The guy then realizes that he was wrong about healing magic, because he really needs it. Day 10 comes and now that Usado can manifest healing magic on demand, he doesn't get tired no matter how much he runs. But the guy feels like he is getting uneasy. Because all he is doing is running around every day. That's why he is worried about whether he will really be able to help Kazuki and Inakami. Furthermore, the guy is sure that M's Rose would deck him if he voiced his concerns. To his bad luck, Rose yells at him to do 30 more laps, Funnily, Usado decides to not call her M's Rose anymore, because he feels like she doesn't deserve any more than just Rose. After that, Usado angrily looks at the girl and thinks that he just has to finish his training for now, because after that, he will rip Rose a new one. Yude is all bark and no bite. After that, he continues his running. Fast forward to day 11. Apparently, there is a new addition to the training regimen today. Usado is doing push-ups and surprisingly, he has done 815 push-ups. Yet he is still doing more and it appears the healing magic is coming out of his whole body. Suddenly, Rose asks the guy if he knows why he is training his body like this. Hence, she reveals to him that it's because he can run from the enemy as quickly as possible in battle. And it's also so he can save his injured allies, since the faster the guy runs, the faster he can save them. The guy finally understands the meaning behind his training. Therefore, he finished training without getting scolded too much today. Apparently, Usado is feeling that he should be thrilled about it, but it seems pretty scary for him. Day 12 came and the guy ran until the afternoon and then he did push-ups into the night. It appears, Usado is feeling his body getting lighter. On the 13th day, Rose has apparently caught on to that fact. Therefore, she gives him a jacket with weights on it and tells him to run while wearing those. Fast forward to the 14th day, the guy comes to get his lunch, but sadly his lunch was missing. Thus he asks the other guys if they have seen his lunch box. Surprisingly, a bald guy is. On the other hand, Rose is watching him from afar and it seems like the guy has been tricked. Funnily, Wasato also realizes that maybe he has been brainwashed. A week later, Kazuki, Inukami, and a yellow-haired girl come to visit Usado. Therefore, another guy takes them to Usado. After reaching the forest, the guy signals at Usado's direction and tells him that he is over there. Kazuki and Inukami become shocked seeing Usado. Apparently, the guy is doing push-ups by carrying a heavy rock on his back and even the girl is sitting on top of the rock. However, Rose is taunting him that he is slowing down again like a caterpillar. Thus, she scolds him to not whine about something this easy. Afterwards, Usado arrogantly replies to her, Who the hell is whining here? The guy even mocks her by clicking his tongue at her. Seeing that, she asks him if he has just clicked his tongue at her. The boy teases her that she is so light that he can't help himself. After that, Rose jumps down from the rock and stands in front of the guy. Surprisingly, this crazy girl adds another heavy rock on the poor guy's back. However, he holds them bravely and even his healing power starts coming out of his whole body. The girl finally looks happy with Usado. Meanwhile, his friends can't believe that he is really his friend. Funnily, Inukami notices the guy's biceps and she starts drooling for his muscles. Whereas, Kasuki feels that this training is brutal. Suddenly, a man with yellow hair goes angrily to the girl and holds her by her collar. He then asks her what in the world she is doing. Hence, he lectures her that she is destroying a young man with a bright future. The girl tells him to let her go and she even calls him an old man Siglis. After that, she tells him his mighty ideas are impressive, but she has her own way of doing things. Surprisingly, she informs him that Usado is going to become her right-hand man, and it will be a real problem if he can't even handle this much. This man looks pissed at her. 
Meanwhile, Usado becomes stunned knowing that she wants him to be her right-hand man. Rose praises Usado that he is a real find, and she loves how he can't stand to lose. The way he never gives up is even better. And top of all this, she is impressed that he is able to survive her training. Funnily, Usado can't believe that in the end, he's the one getting screwed, even though he just wanted to flex a thing or two. But now it's backfired on him. Rose then orders the guy to take a break and get some lunch. Also, she tells him to go catch up with his friend. After that, the man requests Kazuki and Inukami to take care of Princess Celia, because he can't come with them, since he has to speak with Rose. Hence, Kazuki assures him that he understood. Afterwards, Kazuki tells Usado to come with them. Hence, they all go from there. Meanwhile, the man tells Rose that he knew she was a deviant, since he was ordered to re-enlist her, but he didn't accept her transfer. The girl informs him that it's not happening either way, because her right eye is totally useless. The man gets angry and shouts at her to stop talking nonsense. On the other hand, Usado is with his friends and apparently they tell him that the man with yellow hair commands the Linger Kingdom's army. And he is the Commander Siglis, the strongest knight in the kingdom. It appears he is teaching Inokami and Kazuki sword fighting. Usado seems impressed by the man, however he then notices the yellow-haired girl, thus he asks them who she is. The girl then gracefully introduces herself that she is Celia Volgast Olinger. Hearing her last time, Usada realizes that the girl is the king's daughter, so he becomes aware of the fact that she is a princess. The guy funnily jumps from there and bows down in front of her. He then apologizes to her for his uncouth conduct. Dude is a bigger drama queen than any girl, hence the girl assures him that it's fine and there is no need to be formal with her. Usado seems confused by her reply. Therefore, he asks him if it's really fine with her. Celia replies that she would like this much more. Afterwards, Inukami tells the guy that he is acting just like Kazuki did in the beginning. Funnily, Kazuki becomes embarrassed and he tells the girl to stop it. Surprisingly, Celia has bought a snack for everyone, so she tells them to enjoy it. They all become happy seeing the food. After that, they start eating it. Usado seems to like the food as he even compliments the girl. Kazuki then looks at Usado and asks him if there's training like that every day. Funnily, the guy gives them a shock by revealing that today's training was pretty light. However, he asks them about how things are going on their end. Therefore, Kazuki answers him that their training itself is pretty difficult, but Commander Siglis and Ms. Welsey always considers their health and well-being, while teaching them how to use their swords and magic. Seemingly, Usado tells him that's how it should be. He then starts to complain about his sensei, and tells him that Ms. Rose is really brutal. Surprisingly, Kazuki apologizes to him. Therefore, the guy asks him why he is apologizing. However, the boy goes to take food first, and as he moves, his biceps flex. Seeing the boy's muscles as he is taking food, the girl can't control herself for a peek of what's inside that shirt. Thus, the hentai girl lifts his shirt up and sees then six packs. No shit, she starts drooling with the intention to feel them. The rest becomes history judging by the blonde girl's reaction. The guy then tries to distract her by asking Kazuki what he wanted to say earlier. Hence, Kazuki asks him if it isn't tough for him. Usada looks at his friend sweetly and confesses that it's crazy tough, since in the beginning he kept wanting to run away. Thus, Kazuki gets curious and asks him if he feels any different now. Surprisingly, Usada tells him that Ms. Rose is scary, but he doesn't want to run away anymore because now he is having fun training with his fellows and Ms. Rose, so he feels life isn't that bad. Hearing this, Inukami tells him that he is amazing, because he has already found his place. However, the guy doesn't feel comfortable taking the compliment. Hence, he tells her that he is not amazing. He is just stubborn. At that moment, Usada shows them their healing magic and tells them that the two of them are going to fight as heroes someday. So he also wants to be able to do something. After a moment, Inukemi excitedly tells him that now she can count on him to come and save her if she ever gets in trouble. Funnily, Usado teases her that he will do it when she talks like a normal girl. Inukemi doesn't look happy with the comment. After that, they enjoyed their time with each other. Suddenly, the bald guy interrupts them and calls Usado. He then happily tells Usado that he was kind enough to bring in some lunch. Hence, Usado gets angry at the guy for talking to him like he is doing a favor for him. Funnily, it seems like Usado still hasn't forgiven him for stealing his food. That's why he is looking pissed at him. Meanwhile, the bald guy is looking scared of Usado, as he says to him if he is a kid who is still holding the grudge of the past. 
Thus, Usado angrily taunts him that he doesn't want to hear this from the guy who stole that kid's lunch. At that moment, Usado goes forward to attack him. Meanwhile, the bald guy also tells that he will also beat the crap out of him today, since the boss isn't around here. After that, they both start fighting with each other like crazy. On the other hand, the guy's friends are looking at them from afar. Cilia gets worried about them, however, Kazuki tells her that it's fine, because he thinks that this is just part of Usado's daily life. Inukami also thinks the same and feels like the guy is living here each day as freely as himself. Suddenly, Kazuki announces that he is feeling a bit restless, so he is going back to the castle to train. Thus, the girls stop him and tell him that they also go with him. Inukami then looks at Usado, and it appears she believes there is a reason the three of them were summoned in this world together. After that, they go from there. Fast forward to the nighttime. Usado is relaxing in a hot water tub and thinking that it was great to see his friends. Funnily, the guy kind of freaks out about Inukami's behavior regarding his body. However, he feels that what she has said was true. His body really has changed and he has gotten a lot faster too. The guy feels that he has been healing his muscles over and over again after they are damaged by brutal training and that is the result his body has changed. Except he has to run to save the injured on the battlefield. Apparently, the guy is doubting his ability to do that because he feels that maybe he doesn't have the mental fortitude to match the body he has built. The next day comes and the guy is eating his food. When suddenly, Rose comes there and throws the bag at the guy's face. She then orders him that they are going out today. The other guys around him seem worried about the guy as they think that the time has finally come. After a while, Rose is standing in front of a guard. Funnily, the guard is looking scared of the girl as he scaredly asks her what she's doing there. Thus, the girl informs him that she wants to show her subordinate the outside world. The guy then scaredly goes away to open the gate. Seeing her powerful aura on people, Usada realizes that the girl just has to stand there to scare someone. Afterwards, they go outside of the city. While they are walking, Usado asks the girl where are they going. Funnily, the girl tells him to shut up and follow her. After some time, they finally reach the cliff. The girl informs him the forest down there is also known as the Darkness of Linger and it's infamously teeming with monsters. Surprisingly, Rose orders the guy to go down there and tells him to not come back until he hunts down a Grand Grizzly. Usado starts panicking because Blue Grizzlies only turn into Grand Grizzlies after living a hundred years, and it appears they are really dangerous. However, the girl didn't get phased by his panicking, as she tells him that he should be able to take one down easily. Funnily, the guy reminds her that all he has done is to run, so he doesn't know how to fight. Surprisingly, Rose lifts the guy easily with his backpack. Meanwhile, Usado is trying to free himself. However, Rose suddenly throws the guy like a football into the forest. The following day, the sun is shining brightly in the sky, with smudges of clouds on the side. Two travelers are standing on the edge of a valley that is wrapped in greenery altogether, with a river running along. While looking over the vicinity of this place, one of them declares it to be the forest, known as the Darkness of Linger. The valley stretched vastly before them, lush and inviting, sending off a strange attraction to them. Furthermore, she sheds light on the fact that this place is infamously crowded with monsters. Rose, the greenhead hottie, commands Usado not to step his foot back until he guts down a grand grizzly. Usado gets a shiver down his spine after realizing what Rose just spit out of her mouth. This guy, Usado, sure looks like one hell of a ragged doll with a flimsy haircut of his. Probably, the guys just started regretting signing up for this wild adventure brought to him by Rose. He requests her to calm down and let him catch a breath. All of a sudden, Rose grabs his crappy bag and lifts him in the air so easily, like he is some clothes over the hangar. Desperately, he tries to break off from her, asking her to put him down. Suddenly, Rose swirls him in and winds him up to the infamous forest while ignoring his nagging about what an old hag she is. A star glimmers in the sky as soon as Eustea reaches the sky height. As he inches towards the ground, his face is already stretched to a hideous, top-tier comical distortion. Panicking to the greatest degree as he gets closer to the ground, he thinks he is going to fall into his grave at this rate. Getting closer to the ground, he imagines how his death will reach everyone. A pitiful subordinate, Usada Ken, gets thrown by the rescue team captain, Rose, and ends up dead in the darkness of Linger. Then he says that his life is not a joke, but a sudden green light envelopes his body and glows through his skin. Looks like this guy thinks the Wakanda Forever pose is gonna give his ass enough strength to bear this fall. Oh wait, it did. Usedo Ken finally finds the courage to use his magic under his control. 
With green light glowing through him, he suddenly flips himself in the air and lands with his hands touching the ground first. He takes a long sigh of relief while sitting on top of his grassy graffiti. Then he thanks God for his safe landing. Anyone with speed dial the God for a quick check-in if a green hottie tosses you like a seed in a watermelon. Afterward, he heals his hands himself while looking over to see where he is. Now that he is here in the forest, he thinks that it would be risky to go back. He then admits that it is better to stay here and do as Rose ordered him. A sudden vision of a grizzly bear sends chills down his spine, but he shakes it off. Moreover, he is excited to hunt a grizzly bear in this forest. Furthermore, he tries his best to make himself feel as if this job is for the rookies who don't come close to his feet. Plus for him, it is just a two meter tall grizzly bear, which he thinks will be a cupcake ride to Disneyland. Upon ending his words, he hears a growl behind him in the bushes. A few seconds later, he screams at a growling white bear, and then both of them scream together at each other. So this is happening in the land of the darkness of Linger, where monsters are crowding so high. Running like Usain Bolt, he screams over his lungs while trying to get away from the white grizzly bear. Horror grows thicker on his face as he sees the bear chasing him for his flesh and bones. Not only that, he finds the bear way bigger than he pictured. Also, his claws and fangs are way more huge than he imagined. Although he thinks he has confidence in his speed, he will sweep away from the bear's gaze. However, he asks himself if the grizzly bear is capable of matching his running speed. But suddenly, the bear does a peekaboo from the sidelines, scaring the hell out of Usado. So he gets the idea that the bear is right on his steps, almost reaching enough to grab his color and rip him in shreds. In this heated moment, he recalls the time when Rose was tossing him around like he was some kind of ball. He remembers Rose training him for this very moment before him. So he pushes himself to think and figure out a way to live through it. This is why he survived all the hellish training she put him through all this time. From running to lifting heavy-weighted blocks, he believes this ugly thing is nothing compared to Rose. All of a sudden, he shifts his body gear from running to turning around and facing that ugly grizzly. Further, he calls upon that big teddy bear to come and face him one-on-one. -on -one. As words reach his mouth, he notices two more monsters running behind the big grizzly. Usedo Ken is shocked enough that he becomes a statue, ready to be tossed around again when the bears decide to gang up on him. With that, he declares that ganging up on someone alone is cowardice. Then he notices two blue grizzlies are joining this flesh-eating party. Sweat washes down his body as he continues to struggle and run in a deep forest alone. While running, his ear hears a waterfall nearby, and he spots the light directing him outside. Rushing towards the light, he jumps in the air while accepting his fate. He chooses to die in the water rather than ripping himself in shreds by some bears. With gritted teeth, grizzly bears watch him jump down the waterfall and get away from them. Furthermore, he is rolling like a ball in the river and soon finds enough pressure to swim back to the surface. Later, as the sun is setting, he hangs his wet clothes over a tree branch and curses his luck of the day. Putting his knife inside a knife case, he believes he has only emergency rations, a canteen, and a knife. After noticing that this is all he has in the bag packed by Rose, he wishes that she could have added something to start a fire with. Moreover, trying to take a bite out of bread, he asks himself if that woman could be a demon in disguise or an ogre. While eating bread and drinking water during the sunset, it has been a rough day for Stedo Ken. Thinking about why he has come this far, he remembers his orders from Rose to hunt down a grizzly bear, which he believes is an impossible task. Hearing a growl from deep down in the forest, he gulps water in and decides to take care of this tomorrow. Then he marks his achievement of the day on the tree beside him, showing that he has survived his first day. Then the side glows green where he was sitting. The next day in the morning, the birds are chirping in the valley of darkness. Usado on some tree is putting an initial T over their surface with his knife. He jumps from the tree then, landing on the ground with a determined mindset to hunt the grizzly today, once and for all. Putting his knife back in his case, set on his waist, he proceeds to walk down the path of the forest, marking his initials as he goes by. Moreover, he states that he has got to learn more about his enemies in order to pre-plan their funerals. At first, he believes he needs to figure out where their hideout is. After marking every tree, he is cutting some leafy strips over the surface as if cooking up some trap. While this is going on, he breaks out in a sweat, drinks some water, and notices what he thinks are bare scratches on a tree. He asks himself if the grizzlies could be somewhere near him. All of a sudden, he hears someone in the bush rustling the leaves. It spooks the heck out of Usado and he clenches his knife, prepared to chop whatever it is there. Ready in the battle position with a fixed gaze, 
He finds himself embarrassed when a cute bunny comes out of the bushes. The knuckle-headed loser thinks that the bunny could be a monster. A few moments later, the bunny crawls to Usado as if he is having a hard time to even beg, and Usado asks him if he is hurt. The bunny responds with a nod that he is hurt. So Usado is bewildered to know that a tiny bunny can understand him. Therefore, he heals the bunny's limb with his healing magic. With a green glow over the bunny's limb, he has received the best treatment from the healing magic user, Usado Ken. After he is done healing, he rubs the bunny's cheeks and asks him to be careful again and try not to get hurt again. All of a sudden, he stands up and walks to hide behind a tree as if he is sensing something. Noticing that the bunny is following him around, he commands the bunny not to follow him. Furthermore, he mentions to him that he is searching for some spooky monsters right now, so he has to go hide somewhere. Moreover, he tries to convey that it will be dangerous for a little bunny to be caught in the midst of a grizzly bear fight. Nothing can make this tiny thing understand anything other than this knuckle-headed loser is his savior mommy. The bunny is still following him despite the fact that he asks him not to. After playing the follow me around game, he then realizes that maybe this bunny is telling him that he knows where the grizzly is. So he asks him if he knows the whereabouts of the grand grizzly. Soon, the bunny's long antenna ears jerked and he runs in a different direction as if to look for something. Going a bit further, he looks at Usado as if hinting him to follow him behind. He then follows him around the forest as he hops in hopes trying to take him to the grand grizzly. Bingo, realizing how helping a tiny bunny pays him a lot, he finds himself beside the nest of a grizzly bear. All of the grizzlies are sleeping like growling babies beside their tunnel. He then spots the cave as their hidden den. Further, he believes that he needs to monitor this situation without being found. Hiding far away in the bushes, he notices that they are sleeping like a family. Recalling back, he remembers that the Grand Grizzlies live in groups and he has seen them like this for the very first time. All of a sudden, the bunny hugs Usado's face and he pats him. As time goes by, he sits beside the river and fills up his water bottle. While filling up, he is worried about how long he is going to drink water that has not been boiled at all. Drinking water from his hand, he then realizes that he has no choice when he is stuck here. Then the bunny comes closer to his thigh and Usado spots him in shock that he has not left still. The bunny then hops on his shoulder and the guy calls him a weird little bunny. Moreover, he mentions that he is still monitoring them. Far away, the grizzly is blowing his nose bubbles while being in the deepest sleep. After noticing them for so long, he finds nothing out of the ordinary. But unfortunately, he finds himself feeling soft toward the blue grizzlies who are kind of cute. And then he looks over at the bunny and tells himself that this bunny is sort of cute as well. Moreover, he believes that he is living a pretty good life here. Still after marking the initials over the tree, he is holding his stomach hard while lying under the tree, trying to figure out which is it that caused the stomach ache so brutally. Laying with tucked legs, he tries to use his healing magic to fix this issue. But unfortunately, his own healing magic does not affect the stomach in any way. He believes that he could be poisoned after all. Clenching his eyes shut, he believes there might be a cure to fix this terrible stomach ache. Quickly, the bunny rushes in to comfort the guy when he asks him why he is here again. He then pats his head and tells him that he is glad to see him alive though. Another day begins when the bunny shows him a small lake among the forest trees. Looking at the bunny, he wonders if the water is safe in this so he asks him. Hence, he does think that this water seems clearer than the river water he drank before. So he sits down to drink it and finds it so delicious that he thanks the bunny on the spot. However, the bunny is not looking at him and shivering with fear. He asks the bunny what is wrong with him. His gaze fell above the tree where the bunny sits. While that is happening, he follows and climbs over the top to look around. Then he asks the bunny if some monster is hiding here. Seeing the bunny shiver so much, especially when he did not even pass any look in front of Grand Grizzlies, Usada worries about what is lurking down there. He then hears leaves rustling down there. All of a sudden, his eyes grow wide when he tries to make out what it is he is looking at. A purple snake is dragging its body throughout in the form of loops. He asks what the hell this thing could be, and he remembers there was nothing he read about it. But still, he believes he is feeling that this thing is dangerous far more than a grand grizzly. Moreover, as his red bulgy eyes look for prey, Usada notices that bloodlust oozing out from every inch of their body. He expresses that he does not plan to go anywhere near that. As soon as the snake monster leaves their sight, he catches his dying breath. So today will be the fourth day since he has laid eyes upon the giant snake monster. And he reports that he has not been able to let that uneasy feeling go from his inside, 
but he did not give up on observing the Grand Grizzly. Hiding in the bushes, he is still keeping a watch over the Grand Grizzly that will guarantee his safety. A blue baby grizzly falls from the white grizzly, making it the most cute thing to watch. He notices that these grizzlies are exactly the same as they were. He states that watching them from this far warms his heart. But he believes that he cannot go back home without cooking some grand grizzly roasting party for Captain Rose. Holding his knife, he has made up his mind to chop them off, but he puts it off until another day. The darkness of the Linger Forest has grown darker as the clouds hit the shower button over the area. Meanwhile, Usado asks the bunny if he should not go when the bunny makes a fuss over something. The bunny then tries to pull his feet back from the path Osato is walking on. Seeing the bunny put so much effort into such a tiny body, he honors his hard work and sits down. Furthermore, he mentions that he will stay till the rain stops over this tree and asks the bunny if it is good enough. The bunny then nods. Afterward, as the sky gets cleared up slowly, he is prepared again to battle the grizzlies and finally run off home. Moreover, he has planned to kick their butts and hand them over the stick as a trophy for Rose. Walking to the battlefield, the bunny hops on his shoulder and he realizes that this tiny thing has come again to change his mind. However, he tells him that he cannot stop him today and he has to hunt down the grizzlies to finally get out of the forest. The bunny gets sad and jumps away from the guy, but Usado continues to walk ahead. But as soon as he reaches the ground, he finds grizzlies slit open and butchered over the ground, bleeding to their deaths. Incapable to piece this together, he asks himself what the hell is going on here. Seeing the grizzlies slaughtered like a couple of tiny dogs, he thinks that Rose is going to be furious enough to make him her pet. He expresses that she will kill him when she sees that he has let someone else steal his prey. Noticing the bite marks over their bodies, his instincts remind him about the giant snake monster with red bulgy eyes. He is sure that the monster was not into eating the grizzlies but only liked tearing them apart. Just for the sake of killing, he has massacred a bunch of grizzlies, and this is how frightening that giant monster is. All of a sudden, he gets spooked when he hears a rumble far away from a moving rock. As the rock falls to the ground, Usado's gaze falls on the blue puffball, which seems like jumping down the ground. As the puffball seems to get closer, it becomes clear to see that it is the grizzly's child who is trying to nudge his mother to wake her up. Seeing this tragic incident, he is worried about losing to a giant snake monster and defeating a few grizzlies. But also seeing this terrible sight, he remembers that he hates losing to Rose as well. Not only that, he also spent quite a lot of his days planning a perfect trap to hunt the grizzlies down. But he hates that dumb giant snake monster stole his quarry, and he toured his nerve for nothing for so long. Clenching his knife, he mentions what he hates the most despite everything else, is seeing a child crying over his parents' brutal slaughter. Seeing this brutality, he tells the little grizzly that he will avenge the death of his parents, so just wait for him here. Afterwards, somewhere back home, a guy comes and asks for Usada's whereabouts. He gets to know that he is out for training in the dark forest. Furthermore, he mentions that Usado has been there for the last 10 days. The guy asks the Baldi it is a bit of a long adventure for Usado Ken alone. As confused as they are, he tells them he doesn't know anything except the fact that the boss is the one who decides everything. The Baldi asks the guy for confirmation beside them, who is trying to peel the potatoes. To which he adds that the boss is not present at the moment, and they are not aware of what is going on. The red-haired guy, Kazuki-kun, and the black-haired woman, Suzune, find themselves confused in the middle. In the vastness of the green field, as they both walk down the hill, the Suzuna tells Kazuki-kun that he gets awfully stressed when it is about Usado-kun. To which Kazuki stops and turns to face his senpai, telling her that she should be worried about him as well. After carefully thinking about it, Suzuna states that she cannot be honest with her opinion on this matter. Furthermore, she mentions that if Rose is making him do this all, then it is going to be fine. Realizing what Suzuna said, he does believe in Rose picking the right decision. Moreover, Suzuna tells him that she has faith in Usado, that he will soon come around, and his comeback will be hale and hearty. Realizing how much Suzuna believes in Usado, Hasuki quickly mentions that he does believe in him too. Afterward, Usado in the forest is munching on the bread so far and peeling the wood as well. He continues to drink water from his bottle, then he proceeds to do stretches and exercise, preparing himself for a great battle. Putting his small knife beside him, he makes a spear weapon out of wood and asks if the bunny is going to take him to the snake. The bunny is scared to even think about the snake, but Usada demands to show him the way only and then he can run away fast, so the bunny nodes and agrees to show the way. He continues his training on the side of the river 
and also follows the bunny in finding the giant snake monster. Further ahead, he is shocked to see the giant snake at the same spot he left him. He remembers that he told the cub to stay here and now he is dangerous due to him. The giant snake is hissing towards this blue puffball. Looking at his eye, he remembers Rose's eye and anger, and he thinks about the order which was given. He has slowly drifted apart from his goal. Even so, he believes that this monster is really dangerous and his eyes are as terrifying as Rose's are. But even then, he believes that there is nothing spookier than Rose herself. Mustering up the courage finally, he jumps to attack that giant snake. When he thinks it is his chance, suddenly the snake comes right in his face as he is about to slash him in half. As the snake tries to bite, he finds an opportunity and strikes the wooden spear in the snake's red, bulgy eyes. The blood splashes outside, and when the snake screams in agony, he throws him on the side by his tail. Trying to heal himself, he asks the snake if this is all he has gotten. Determined to give his finishing blow, he takes out his knife. The giant snake jumps to come closer to attack Usado, but he thinks that it would be perfect if he attacks from where he is blinded, so the right side. Dodging the snake's attack, Usado jumps higher but suddenly, the snake bites his shoulder as if it is chips for him, with half of his knife stuck in the snake's inside. Furthermore, he notices that he used his own blinding eye spot as bait to lure him out. With his shoulder stuck in the snake's mouth, he remembers that his knife is still half lodged inside, so he pushes it inside even further. As the blood spills over the ground, the snake loses and falls back in shock. But Usado is experiencing dizziness, not understanding what is happening or why everything is going blurry. Realization hits him hard when he figures that this snake is not just a giant but also venomous, but he tells it that he knows how to heal himself. Hence, thanks to that poisonous water, he learned how to heal himself of a stomach ache. He believes that when the poison is wrecking his insides, he only has to heal himself from the insides out. Finally, he lands a smacking punch to his throat, which ruptures the way inside. Not gonna lie, for a healer, he sure has a style in combat skills. Furthermore, he rips the snake into shreds and pieces with the help of the little cub slashing the snake with his nails. After conquering the giant snake, Wasato is lying on the ground beside the snake, catching his breath, wondering if Rose will accept this. But right now, he is so glad that he finally took care of something bigger than a plain old grizzly. Then Blue Puff Grizzly runs his cheek against his, to which Usada replies that he has finally taken revenge for this little guy. When brushing his fur, he tells him that he wants to heal his wounds but his mana has been used to neutralize the venom. Moreover, he is unable to move a single muscle because he is exhausted. All of a sudden, the bleeding giant snake wakes up again and glares with his red, bulgy eyes, sending fear down Usado's spine. He cannot believe what he is seeing, and he cannot move even if he is trying his best to. The cub is trying to help him pull out of this miserable situation, but he shouts at the cub to run away. Seeing the snake about to attack and eat both of them alive, his gaze widens. Thinking about Kazuki, Inukami Senpai, and Rose, this is where it struck him that all of this is Rose's fault for leaving him here with all these monsters. In his final moments, he screams the name of the brutal vixen, Rose, who played him over for the forest training. All of a sudden, when he screams about Rose being an ogre, Rose comes flashing from the sky and brutally smashes the snake to the ground in a few seconds. Looks like this took an unexpected turn or this guy has some summoning magic as well. Squishing it beneath her boots, she feels disgusted by his existence, and she expresses that he should rot in hell now and die already. Seeing how Rose saved his ass, Usado bows on the floor before her, calling her Captain Rose. Shocked to see her, he asks why she is here, to which she replies that the tiny bunny filled me in and I came as fast as I could. Rose further introduces the bunny as Kukuru, the smug face, who is her pet that she left to watch to guard your safety. This guy's trust is robbed from the bunny world. Now, every time he sees a bunny, he will think of some shady business underneath that smug face. He complains that this bunny came to him injured and all. Rose smirks at his mediocre judgment, calling him a sucker. She further clarifies that it was all an act to make you trust him. Moreover, she describes that she never left this place and she was nearby, ready to wait for the signal when she was needed. But she didn't know that something like this could come. He asks if she knows this monster, to which Rose tells him that it is a creation of the Demon Lord's army. Furthermore, she mentions that Siglas couldn't end this creature during the last invasion because it must have run into the forest. As they look over the snake, she states that she never expected him to kill Grand Grizzlies intently. Hence, she describes that their power is so immense that a full unit of elite troops is needed to hunt one down. 
Realization hits him hard when he figures out that Rose wanted a novice like him to fight with this giant monster. Furthermore, she explains that she doesn't expect him to win from this, but the goal doesn't change. She says it was to gain the experience of fighting something much stronger than you. She did see you when the snake arrived, but she tells him that things got so interesting that she didn't want to intervene and see what would happen. Usado protests, saying that he could have died by now. Soon, the blue cub starts to defend Usado against Rose. Not gonna lie, this puffy bear is out here in such a small package. Trying to defend a half-assed loser from a giant snake. Talk about the loyalty of the cubs over the vengeance tales. That's new. Rose asks him if he has taken a liking to him, to which he replies that he took revenge for his parents being killed by that snake. He says that he is all alone now. Seeing them get along so well, Rose tells the grizzly that he is coming with them now. She tells him that his job would be to carry this knuckle-headed loser, so the cub then nudges and puts Usado over his back, ready to be on duty. All of them then proceed to go home as Rose lifts all of them on his bare hand. Looks like this woman could bench press a dragon if she wants. When they are set on their path, Rose asks Usado what he was calling her before. Root? A violent woman? An ogre? A chill runs down his spine. She tells him that he is not getting any sleep tonight on her watch and she will make sure of that. She then declares that he has passed with flying, erupting colors this time. Looking over the sunset, she tells him that he is qualified to stand with her on the battlefield. However, she does believe he cannot handle the basics, yet he has got what it takes. The things she finds most outstanding are his ability to withstand physical pain and his physical aptitude with a strong mentality. Further on, she mentions that these abilities aren't found in the other two healers. She tells him to be proud and soon he will be joining in on something that is coming. When he asks what it is, she tells him that the demon army might be attacking soon. Looks like the Ellinger Kingdom is about to get lingering by a demon army. Sounds like things are starting to get dicey, or should I say spicy? Afterward, a man calls Emila Vergret, the commander of the Third Army, to which she responds that she is present. He asks her how the preparation to invade the Ellinger Kingdom is taking place. She tells him that it is smoothly proceeding and everything's ready. Therefore, they will soon initiate their advances into the Linger Kingdom. The day of Usado hunting down the grizzlies but accidentally crossing paths with a giant snake monster of Demon Lord's army has come to an end. Captain Rose, who helped him take down that fuzzy old snake, is standing before the sunset. As the wind rustles through her gorgeous green hair, she finally reveals her awaited fear. She declares that the demon army is on their move to attack soon. Shaken to hear this news, Usado confirms that the war is going to erupt while sitting cross-legs behind her with his new companion, the young grizzly. When to fear when you have a blue puff grizzly to rescue you, a dash full of cuteness-induced enemy distraction is gonna take them all down to the sweet old hell. Furthermore, she states that as per his abilities and today's status report on his resilience, she wants him to be on the front lines. This guy on the front lines? Looks like we're about to have a front row seat to this show. From what I hear, it's gonna be somewhere between sword slashes and crispy popcorn fun. She expresses how he is better at equipping physical pain and a strong mental state better than the other two healers. Therefore, she tells him that he has passed the test to be one of the frontliners to heal the wounded. Turning to see him eye to eye, she conveys that they will be recruited in the vanguard. Confused as to how he managed to hit that high, he asks what is going to happen with Tong and others with him. Taking this into consideration, he expresses that there are other healers in the midst as well. In addition to that, she clarifies that the other two healers are going to have a fitting role just like the right man for the right job. Judging his abilities, he believes that he will not be able to jump to the standard she is putting him on. But Rose assures him that they have a little more time to level up his skills. It's the time for this guy to put his skill to the test. Ready to fight, ready to heal, and ready to win. Let a grizzly grizzle some demon army. Now she commands him to steal himself before it dashes away. Looking over his hand, he asks if he can really do something like this. Afterward, the horror strikes when the dark clouds cover the demon lord's castle. In the castle, the demon army is preparing for the upcoming battle. While that is going on, the demon lord asks for the report on the preparations for invading the Linger Kingdom. He is informed by the short, red-headed commander that it is going as smoothly as it is expected. Furthermore, she informs him that their units are done preparing for the Ellinger battle. She declares that they shall soon leave and initiate their advances toward the Ellinger kingdom. This makes the demon lord happy, and he entrusts 3rd Army Commander Emila to lead the troops further on from here. 
To elaborate further, he expresses that they have managed to slip through their grasp before, despite their past successes. Taking her life into consideration, he states that he wants to see her absolute efforts, although she doesn't need to battle to the grave. Bowing to her demon lord, she promises to do her best. Seeing how she is ready to put her life on the line, he tells her that she is as serious as always. Then he dismisses her, permitting her she can go now. A few moments later, she walks out to the corridors and catches her dying breath while sweating. The presence of the demon lord is enough to take someone's breath and soul away. Someone spots her panting heavily and asks if Commander Amilla got so worked up before the demon lord. She turns to see someone coming from the shadows. A man with white hair and glasses appears to be mocking her panting. Glaring at the demon doctor from a distance, she commands him that if he is so free to mock others, he better pay attention to his work. With that, he asks her to forget that weird nickname already and go with his proper name, Hyrulek. Ignoring his smug face, she further walks ahead while hearing him rant about his work going quite smoothly. To elaborate further, Hyrulek explains that he is just done with the newest prototype of the demon-made monster. Swiftly, he catches up to her to ask her if she wants to take a look at it. Later, he shows her the demon-made monster he came to attack on the Linger Kingdom. Adding to this, he states that after battling heavy wounds against the warrior named Siglis, he ran away somewhere. But in his defense, the doctor expresses that the number 72 is going to be stronger and better than the 71. While grinding her teeth, she hopes that he is right about this prototype, because there are far worse gruesome warriors than Siglis in the Linger Kingdom. Remembering the rumors about them, the doctor points out as she is talking about the kidnappers. Adding to this, she says that there are some who don't fight at all but stand on the battlefield. They keep waiting among them in front, to sweep the injured fighters back from underneath their gaze, before anyone could realize it. So to put it briefly, the doctor says that they reduce their casualties with this technique. Furthermore, she explains that their boss runs around all over the front lines as a healer, doing his duty on the spot. Not only is she a top-notch healer, but also she battles infuriatingly well like she has a red-eyed demon of her own inside. Moreover, she adds that this woman is after her master while holding a deep grudge against him. Clenching his fist, she swears someday she will defeat that old hag. Adding to that, the doctor reminds her that she is the commander of the troops this time, so she cannot go into the battle herself. To his remark, she turns around to walk away while sharing some of her battle strategies that she has planned to send a demon. Therefore, she tells him that there is an armed knight dressed in black shiny armor whom she has chosen for this particular job. He is up to it because he rides with the intent to kill, and he is known to be the immortal mage of darkness, the Black Knight himself. The knight further on stands in front of the line troops, waiting for the signal to start the battle to the Linger Kingdom. Afterward, somewhere in the Ellinger Kingdom, still, the heavy fog is scattered around everywhere as if the clouds decided to take a walk. With the continued singing of the birds, starting their day in the trees, a house sits nearby where a man declares that the beds are the best over everything. With a bald man lying next to him, Usado hugs his pillow while confronting how he missed hearing Tong snoring. The sun is shining brightly over this land of Linger, and another has just started. The blue grizzly bear sleeping so calmly is disturbed by Usado Ken asking if he is awake now. Recognizing his partner's voice, he moves his ears to express that he is up and ready for the day. Therefore, Usado has brought lots of delicious treats for this grizzly's breakfast. Talk about bed and breakfast, a cute face like him can get all anytime, anywhere. Then he expresses that he has picked some things for him from the cafeteria. Usado proceeds to give him some kind of fruit, and a young bear smells it to make sure. The grizzly's eyes get sparkly, and he eats it in one go. Seeing how happy the grizzly is, he says that he makes it look a lot more delicious than he thought it would be. Then he grabs one for himself and takes a bite. For his luck, he expresses that it tastes damn better than it looks, but the impatient grizzly knocks off the fruit from his hands and gulps it in. Blushing so cutely, the grizzly chews it all up with contentment. Laughing to see how puffy he has gotten, he sits before him with a smile and calls him a glutton face. Hearing a strange sound behind the grizzly, he notices a white long ear hiding behind him. Soon, the bunny steps away from the grizzly and comes in light before Usado. He remembers how this tiny bunny acted so hurt and cute in the last adventure with the giant snake but he was Rose's undercover agent in disguise. While whispering, he calls him a traitor. Further on, he expresses that he has not forgotten how he broke his heart and toyed with its innocence. Not gonna lie, this bunny has wrecked Usado off from cute bunny encounters. If he is gonna spot one again, 
he won't stop himself from remembering the treacherous attempt of a secret agent spying on him from the shadows. But this bunny knows how to melt hearts while showing his glimmery eyes with blushed cheeks. All of a sudden, he forgets everything and is charmed by Kukuru's dazzling cuteness. Realizing what Kukuru is doing, he shakes it off and tells the bunny that he cannot make a fool of him ever again, no matter how cute he can be. Confused as to where the sound Ku is coming from, soon something touches his leg. He looks down to see Kukuru snuggling with his leg, and Usado fights the urge but fails. Frustrated, he then decides to share some of the food with the bunny as well. Lushing with content, Kukuru then sits beside a grizzly munching on the fruit happily. Seeing how the bunny is munching, the young grizzly asks for Usado's attention by giving him a paw. He has named his blue grizzly as Blurin. Usado tells him that he knows he is cute too, and he asks Blurin to eat up. Captain Rose enters the scene being confused about the name Blurin, and Usado spots her casually while feeding the grizzly. As the bunny hops to her shoulder, she then asks if this is the name he is going to give him. Turning to her, he passionately tells him that he took blue from the color blue and re from grizzly to make Blurin. He then expresses that it is a pretty good name according to him, while asking Rose if she thinks the same. Hence, he then feeds another fruit while calling Blurin to open his mouth. As Kukuru licks his hand, the Rose watches Usado with concern. Furthermore, he tells Blurin that it hurts when he is trying to bite from his hands, as if it is something to eat too. Ignoring his motherly love for Blurin, she slides away with whatever look. Moreover, she conveys that she has reported the grizzly bear to his majesty, and they have been permitted to keep Blurin as property of the rescue team. Shooting a glare at the bear, she then tells the grizzly that he can stay, but he has to earn his stay and his keep. Sweat washes over the young bear, and he gets scared by Captain Rose while hiding underneath hay. Usado then asks what Blurin has to do then. Later on the bright sunny day, Blurin yawns when Usado is picking him up in a piggyback formation with iron roads on the front of his chest. He demands why he is carrying him like that when he thinks that running together makes all the sense. Standing beside the field, Rose, the green-headed hottie, commands Usado to stay in this position and tells him this is going to be the simulation training. Grim appears on his face as he tries to take the grizzly's weight on top of him. Adding to that, she explains to Usado to think of the Blurin as someone who is in trouble and he has to rescue him. He looks at the young grizzly on top of him and thinks if he needs to be rescued. Ignoring his chatter, she keeps on saying that Blurin is someone like a wounded soldier in a different sense. With crossed arms, she tells him to hurry and start running up. All of a sudden, they start running together and realize that he has run before, only now he has more weight to carry this path. Furthermore, he smiles while telling the sleepy Blurin that if he manages his mana while running, then it will be a breeze to run through this. All of a sudden, Rose spooks the heck out of this guy. She commands him to pick a damn better pace, or the wounded soldier on his back won't even make it. Frustrated with his captain, he thinks that he did not realize how heavy this little guy is while running in the field. Jeez. As he is walking down the path to rescue the young grizzly, the baldy tongo trying to mimic one punch man, comes out of the bushes flying to smack a punch to Usado. As Tongo the Baldi scares the heck out of this guy, another guy with blonde hair comes running directly at him. However, Usado Ken swiftly dodges the attack thinking what is going on, and he shouts at them asking what the hell they are trying to do. With a concerned look over Blurin, he keeps on running ahead anyway while being chased by these two guys. Moreover, when asking them why they are here, they cross-question Usado about the Master Rose, who must have filled him in. They then inform him that they are part of the stimulating training today, to which Usado expresses that he does not need anyone's help on this battlefield. Furthermore, one of them informs him that there are others hidden in the shadows, waiting to ambush you as well. So they ask him to better focus on them and quit complaining about it. Therefore, Usado then hurries and runs ahead of them. An hour later, he gets shaken to see a man breaking the ground to jump before him and ready to smack Usado with his wooden sword. But he successfully dodges that as well. Later, strange ocean blue balls start falling from the sky. As soon as they hit the ground, the green aura starts evaporating from their liquid and reeks of an awful deadly smell. Irritated as to how far they all can go in this simulation training, he holds his nose tight while lifting Blurin over his back with the other hand. Meanwhile, a guy is sitting on top of a tree, hiding in its shadow, calling out war of his specially made stinky balls over Usado as he runs away faster than the leopard. He shouts at the guy to stop making such crappy weird things. Then three hours later, another guy breaks the ropes that were tightly holding the wooden logs together and sends them off to Usado's pathway. 
Tired from running for three hours straight, he has met with rolling hurdles in his path, and he still can jump with Blurin on the back, dodging one after another. Then, four hours later, he feels kind of slow. All of a sudden, he gets spooked when the bunny Kukuru steps in his way, and he is about to be squished under his foot. Usado and Hurry jumps out of the way accusing that cute spy to be in this with everyone. Further on, when a wooden fan is moving with the wind, Usado has made his way up there with Blurin still on his back. The guy is on the end with his limits, and he is healing himself while continuing to walk. Suddenly, after running so many hours, he feels something weird and trips over to the ground. Blurin then snuggles with his face and is worried about him, to which he says thanks to the grizzly while lying in the field, trying to catch his breath. He then expressed that he thought he could manage this training for at least half a day. Soon, Rose steps in, informing them that this is the limit you should notice of your endurance on the battlefield. Moreover, she mentions that humans get fatigued and exhausted while handling emotions like fear, impatience, and nervousness. To elaborate further, she mentions that is why he keeps on running out of energy and strength faster than normal. On the question of what he should do then, she shoves her hand on his face telling him to shove it in his butt and get used to it while healing his exhaustion. Adding to that, she then asks him to obtain mental fortitude and the ability to be decisive and not halt in the face of fear and trouble. He then holds his head while sitting and thanks her a ton for healing him. In this context, she keeps on adding that once his mana has been restored back to its original state, he is ordered to spend his all afternoon running around the castle town. Startled to hear this, he asks if this applies to having Blurin again on a piggyback formation. She turns to tell him that it is obvious he must. Later in the castle town, everyone is caught off guard with the person running around with a sleepy grizzly bear on his back. There are continuous whispers of what the heck is going on in the castle town. Seeing a blue grizzly, some of them are scared as to what is happening. Irritated by the commotion, Usada thinks he knew this could happen. He feels that young Blurin may look cute and docile, but he is still a monster to these people. One of them expresses that now she has taken a good look and sighs in relief, they spot Usado as part of the rescue team. Realizing this, the people take a sigh of relief. Blurin's nose like dog picks off a smell that is enough to break his sleep. He then taps his shoulder to ask Usado to go over to the fruit section. A woman is selling that green fruit that Blurin likes. Usado apologizes that he doesn't have money to pay for it, but he still asks what these fruits are called. To which that one replies that these are the kingdom's specialty, peffles. Upon requesting another question, he asks why everyone is calm when he is carrying a monster on his back. She then reminds him that he is part of a rescue team, looking at his clothes. Furthermore, she tells him that she sees people like him running around the town all the time and hardly anything scares them, thanks to the team. However, he thinks about how scary their faces are, no wonder they have gotten used to seeing monsters now. And he is about to go ahead when the lady asks him to take one peffle for a treat. While thanking her for her generosity, as soon as gets it in his hands, Luren eats his hands with the peffle. He then scolds him for having bad manners and sees off the nice old lady. Later, a blonde with kitty ears, Amako asks the granny if that is someone from the rescue team. Watching over the bright sky, Wasado tells Luren to meet Kazuki and Senpai, since they are near the castle grounds. When they are running towards the castle, a blonde guy spots them running and runs after them while calling out to stop. When Usado is thinking if Blurin will be allowed inside the castle, a man behind them keeps asking them to stop for a moment. He then tells Blurin that maybe they will refuse because the king lives in that castle too, but they might reconsider seeing how cute Blurin is. The blonde guy keeps on calling him when Usado is finding excuses to get Blurin inside the castle somehow. After some time, the guy trips over and both of them look around to ask if he is okay. Later at the end of the stairs, Usado is healing that guy's injuries and asks how he feels now. Apologizing for the trouble, he then tells him he feels a lot better now. Hence, he asks the guy if he was trying to get to him. To which the blonde guy replies that he was trying to get acquainted with his new junior, and he doesn't usually raise his voice like that. Seeing how confused Usado looks, he figures Rose hasn't told anything yet so he introduces himself as one of the rescue team's healers, Orga Fleur. He then tells him he knew about the new member, but he could never guess that he was summoned with the heroes, although he mentions that he has been training a lot lately that he forgets who he is from time to time. Laughing awkwardly, he is amazed to hear that Usado can keep up with Rose's training while mentioning that it was hard for him and his sister. Stunned to know that Orga's sister is the other healer, 
He tells him that she is five years younger, and they run a clinic in the city too while using their healing magic. Connecting the dots, he asks why he collapsed earlier, to which he replies that he is not good at healing himself as compared to healing others. Furthermore, Usado confides that there are many kinds of healers, and Orga adds that they are part of the rescue team now. He further elaborates that they tend to the wounded under the captain's orders in times of need. Listening to Orga, he recalls Rose telling him that he will tend to the wounded on the front lines as part of the vanguard. He then asks Orga about what he does on the battlefield. Thinking, he mentions Tong and others bring injured to the rear, where he and his sister tend to their injuries like support members trying to reduce the casualties. Moreover, Usada mentions that Rose asked him to join Vanguard, but he asks if he can really handle it. Startled to hear this, Orga tells him that knights and heroes in battle are the ones on the front lines and they are in greatest danger every second. Furthermore, he explains that when they get left behind due to their injuries, they wait for their death because it is harder to reach them. But if only there are healers enough to roam around the battlefield, they can be rescued too. Absolutely, he states that it is a risky and exhausting job for a healer but Captain must trust him because he has proved in deserving such a position. With that, he takes a leave to attend his clinic, or else his sister will scold him. Usado then goes on to do his training. Plus, before bidding his farewell, he asks Usado to not hate Rose too much because she is just clumsy with people. Usado, cutting him, assures him that he doesn't hate Rose at all, even if he thinks of chopping her off to blur in for dinner. Watching Usado run away, Orga signs in relief, thinking that finally Rose found someone. Startled to hear his sister, Yururu scolding the heck out at him through the stairs, she asks if he wants to die on his own. He then expresses he isn't that weak, and also mentions he met Usado just now. He believes that Yururu will like him as much as he does. Afterward, reaching the castle, he asks the guard if he can take Blurin inside. The guard confirms that he is Sir Usado from the rescue team and upon confirming, he grants him permission to take a grizzly bear inside the castle. Upon asking, the guard tells him that Captain Rose has vouched for this grizzly, so he has permission to step inside. He then thanks the guard and moves on ahead, thinking how many people trust Rose. He runs beside a training round of soldiers, battling each other to strengthen their stances on the battlefield. As he goes further, he spots Senpai battling with another soldier, and she is quick to spot Usado-kun. She asks what's this fluffy blue thing on his back. He then introduces his blue grizzly cub, called Blurin, to her. Further mentioning that, when he did survival training in the Alinger Forest, there he found this bear. He looks over to see if Inukami Senpai is paying attention to his stories, but she is staring at the fuzzy balls on the ground. Hesitantly, she asks Usado if she can touch this thing. He assures her that Blurin is super rammed and is friendly. He asks her to touch him, if he bites he can heal her. Startled to hear, she tells him that sometimes he says scary things. But upon touching and claiming animals love her, Blurin knocks her hand away. To save her from embarrassment, she says that she is savoring the feeling of its toes. Then he asks her to call his name, so she asks Blurin to be friends with her, but he bites her hand instead. Smiling awkwardly, he tells her that he must have a tainted soul. But suddenly, Blurin bites his hands, making it comical. She then asks him of having a tainted soul too. Later, she tells him it's been a long time since she has seen him. Looking over her hand, she mentions that she got overzealous in handling swords during training. He takes her hand and heals it for her. Blushing, Senpai asks if he has come to see her today. To which he replies that he has come to see her and Kazuki as well. Turning away, she believes that his super honesty is his only flaw. Furthermore, she tells him that Kazuki isn't here, but outside the kingdom. Moreover, she mentions that he went to gather experience in battling the monsters with sigils and others. Later, while riding the horses, Kazuki asks Commander Siglis if it is true that the Demon Lord's army is going to attack soon. Nodding, Siglis tells him that he is sure they are ready to present more powerful forces than last time, but he adds that they have him and Dame Suzun. Adding to that, he mentions having a raised morale of troops due to the two new heroes joining their sides this time, so victory sides on them. Further ahead, they battle with the wolves together. Later, Senpai mentions that after Kasuki, it is her turn to gain experience, and Usado sees she is going to have fun. She wishes he was worried about her, but not a half-ass worried. Then he bids farewell to Senpai, holding Blurin on his back. She then lifts her sword thinking how frank they have grown together. Later, seeing everyone working so hard, all because the day of the battle with the Demon Lord's army is drawing nearer. 
Since they're going to the battle, he wants to be there for them, so he will work hard to stand among them. Back home, he recalls he could only admire people who could do things he could never do, but it's not the same anymore. Afterward at night, he puts Blur in to sleep and watches Rose standing outside alone. Rose then asks him how his training was and did he get used to the grizzly's weight. He then tells him that he has been training for a little longer and has gotten a bit used to it. Usado then asks something she said about yesterday. He then confesses that he barely survives the giant snake, so he mentions that he was honestly scared of Demon Lord's army approaching soon. He didn't want to step foot there until today. He found something stronger that could scare home even more. He says that he cannot kill anyone or fight with them, but he will rescue Kazuki and Inumaki Senpai, or anyone that needs help, because he declares he is part of the rescue team. With that, she smiles and walks to him, while fist bumping his chest. Showing how proud she is, she tells him together they will save lots of people and knock out the would-be martyrs and bring them to life. Not only that, but they will snatch the wounded from underneath that enemy without them realizing it. She then looks him in the eye and tells him that together they will keep those at death's door alive even if it kills them. That's the job of the rescue team. This is the time Usedo Ken felt he was truly a member of the rescue team. Afterward, Rose puts a heady bag on Usado's stomach, telling him to wake up for his majesty's message over yesterday. She then tells him to head out and join Hiro Suzu in his training outside the castle. Later as they continue their journey, Blurin throws on a reverse card, and now we get to see Usado carrying this huge beast. Looking at Blurin blowing a balloon from his nose makes Usado question the reason why he is being forced to join Suzu in his training. Because Commander Siglis and the knights are already accompanying Kazuki. At first, Rose totally ignores him and keeps walking like she is in some sort of aided. But then the girl explains that weirdly, they have received the same request for Hiro Kazuki's training. However, she had to refuse that quest since Usado had just come back from the forest. While this low-key triggered his majesty who petitioned Rose again last night, thus she cannot refuse him a second time. I mean if I had such a hottie in my kingdom, I would definitely petition against her every day. Furthermore, she tells Usado that he is going to be their healer in case of any unforeseen event. That is why she wants him to take it easy for three days and two nights. Anyways, the duo finally reach their destination and there, they bump into Suzuna, Aruku, and Korin. Suzuna gets excited and surprised to see Usado joining her. She didn't expect that Wimp to join up, but what excites her more is the fact that Usado brought Blurin along with him. She believes that Usado is trying to help her get closer to Blurin. Soon you guys will be seeing an explicit video, but not on this website for sure. Usado then clarifies that he only brought Blurin here because he had no choice, Usado is the only one Blurin actually likes. This somewhat pisses Suzu in it because she wants to be the loved one around here, is it me? Or does Rose feel kind of jealous when Usado mentions Blurin loving him? Anyways, Suzumi then introduces the crib consisting of Aruku the knight and Korin the mage, what is up with the priests not opening their eyes? Although Korn respectfully greets the duo and tells them that she is looking forward to working with them. Usado then starts staring at Aruku's NPC default face. He feels like he has met him or seen him somewhere before. Thus, Aruku explains that after many episodes, he finally got the limelight or else he normally works as a castle gatekeeper. While the small talks are going on, Rose calls the hero Suzun out and tells her that the healing magic Usada uses isn't omnipotent. Because that guy can cure poison and mend injuries however, it is all over if she dies. That is why she'd highly suggest the gang to not overestimate healing magic and be careful while stepping into the field. Bruh, this girl just said the most obvious thing one could hear of course, Usada is a healer, not a necromancer, or something. Even Suzuna takes this warning quite seriously and assures Rose that they will be careful and will avoid any dumb move. Though Rose knows that Suzuna has been trained under Siglis, so in most cases, she knows that Suzuna will do a great job. But in this mission, Suzuna is not alone. That is why she had to warn him. Basically Rose is pointing her finger at Usado because she has zero faith in that boy. Rose legit gives a cold stare at Usado and tells him that she has nothing to say to him. Looking at Usado being confused, which actually pisses her off more, Rose starts confronting Usado and mocks him for expecting advice from her. Thus Usado starts sweating and he tells her that it is okay. Besides, he knows that she will just hurl abuse at him. If Rose didn't have that mommy figure, Usado would never tolerate such behavior. Anyways, Rose then walks away and tells the group that they should too start their journey. 
After staring Rose walking away, Suzumina tells Usado that his mentor is quite strong. So this confuses the boy and he asks her what she meant by that however, Suzumina smiles and tells him that it is nothing and they should start moving. Okay, that was the cringiest e-girl thing that she could do, and I don't know why Suzuin actually ran after saying that. On the other hand, we see Kazuki practicing with his sword alone in the garden. This dude needs a friend and a wooden sword, seriously. Anyways, Kazuki then gets interrupted by Celia, who is unreasonably making a crying face as she asks Kazuki what he is doing after literally seeing him what he is actually doing. So Kazuki tells the dumb blondie that he is practicing swings, but Celia, who is surrounded by her maids, confronts Kazuki. Apparently, Celia has heard about Kazuki returning from the grueling training yesterday, and she cannot believe that he is back at it so soon. Celia then moves further closer to Kazuki as she holds his arm and tells him to relax and take it easy. Wah, this kid ain't 18 for sure, so she needs to step back. Kazuki looks at her and smirks as he tells her that he already had a full night's rest, therefore he is fine. But still, Celia is concerned about him and asks him if he is not overexerting himself. Something weird happens, because the moment Usado lifts his arm to show her he is fine. Celia jumps back like someone just raised the speed of her vibrator. This actually confuses the guy as he stares at Celia falling back. She then wishes Kazuki good luck and runs away while blushing. Now back to Usado, he cannot believe that Kazuki came back that exhausted from the training. However, according to Suzanne, Kazuki was actually happy to get so much combat experience. Taking down lots of monsters on the plain near a forest called the Darkness of Linger gave Kazuki the chills. And that is exactly where Suzun is planning to take the group into. Moreover, Usado gets concerned when he hears the forest's name. Because that is a place where Blurin's happy family lives, so he wonders if Blurin will feel nostalgic going back there. Suddenly, Suzun makes a suspicious face and asks Usado if Blurin is going to stay asleep. Because if that is the case, then she wants to at least carry him or pet him. But that doesn't seem like a good idea to Usado who is being possessive. Not only does that boy refuse Suzanne, but he legit snaps Suzanne's hand when she reaches her hand out to the bear. And just like this, an ultra instinct level fight begins between these two. After swelling Suzuna's hands, she finally stops and asks Usado what's the big deal. So the boy says likewise, that what is the big deal of patting this blue bear, he doesn't understand what has gotten into her. So Suzuna uses her feminine card and tells Usado that this is not so manly, slapping a lady's hand. She believes that Usada must have some sort of hand-slapping fetish. Not gonna lie, that might actually be a thing. The world is a pretty weird place. Usado, on the other hand totally neglects this accusation and tells her that he has no idea what she is talking about. Well, finally Blurin wakes up from his nap after his nose bubble pops. Thus, finally, Usado tells the bear to walk on his own legs though due to his sleep hangover. Blurin starts walking a zigzag which creeps Usado out while Suzanne finds Blurin's unconscious state an opportunity to touch him. Okay, this sounded really weird, but she means it in a good way, I hope. Suzanne sits on the ground and offers Blurin to ride her, I mean she basically wants the bear to jump on her back so she can carry it. Though Usado isn't so sure about this and even warns her, but it is too late. Lazy Blurin is so numb right now that Bro forgets his comfort zone and hangs on her back. Finally, Suzanne's wish comes true and she starts feeling his fluffy hair and warm body. But little does that woman know this bear is actually heady. The moment she tries to carry it, Suzanne falls down. Hence, Usada rushes for help and tells Suzanne to stop getting herself hurt before they even start to fight. He then pushes Blurin and tells that Lazy has to use his feet. Technically, he humbles her because the very next moment, Suzanne gently apologizes to Usado for worrying him and making him use his healing magic on her already. Can we appreciate the fact that along with healing magic, Usado has a great amount of strength. Man was legit carrying this fatas blurin like it has no weight this whole time. Plus, Usado tells her that it is okay. He doesn't mind using his magic, but he wants Suzanne to be more careful. Suddenly, both Blurin and Corin sense presence, it appears that Corin's staff has detected multiple creatures ahead. And not just that, Uruku loudly says that whoever is ahead of them should stop immediately and reveal themselves if they are not monsters. Basically, he detected two people's presence, well it's not monsters, but it is worse, humans. Two people then come out of the bushes and reveal their intention of ambushing them after they would surround them. But now that they have been caught, 
they are left with no option but to fight face to face. Apparently, the group is now surrounded by a bunch of bandits. Why is there always a bald guy in those groups who does the talking? Seeing the royal knights and mage makes them think that they hit some sort of jackpot. Thus the bandits ask them to drop all of their valuable items if they wish to live. Seriously? Seeing a group of adventurers is a plus point. And as expected, Aruku refuses which pisses the bandits off. He reminds Aruku that they have outnumbered them and it would be wise of them to just surrender. Usado on the other hand is still confused and wonders if those people are bandits. No shit Sherlock, can't blame him, the boy expected the bandits to look more dangerous with some cool scars rather than a bald guy and a bunch of Ringo hair people. Weirdly, Suzanne seems scared as she pinches Osado, but the boy tells her to not worry, even he can handle these small fries on his own. Turns out, instead of being scared, Susan is actually excited. Because this is the first time she has encountered real bandits for so long, she thought that this concept only existed in stories. In a world full of magic and miracles, she didn't believe in bandits. What the heck? However, Blurin then walks further for a good view, but seeing the blue grizzly bear on their side scares the hell out of those bandits. To handle their reputation, Valdi tells the group to not worry, besides, it is just a cub that looks unharmed. So there is no need to be afraid of that thing, thus the bandits get a hold of themselves and reveal that they will actually capture Blurin and will turn him into a pelt. Well, this triggers Usado, but before he can do anything, Suzanne starts to electrocute the guy who said this. Seeing their mates getting crispy worries the bandits that they might have confronted the wrong group. Meanwhile, Usado starts complimenting Suzanne for having great control over that lightning because she somehow managed not to kill that guy. So Suzanne flexes about her training and tells him that she has gotten much stronger now. This actually flattens Usado who tells Suzanne to go all out and defeat these bandits on her own. Although he is here, she needs any sort of healing. I don't know why, but Usado even starts blushing. But hey, Baldi ain't gonna stand there and hear their chit chat. So he commands his men to rush because he believes magic is useless in melee range. Well, guess he was wrong because Suzanne legit stunned the whole group in a single blow. Usado, who is chicken riding Suzanne, calls her attack a human electric eel. So Suzanne tells him to stop with the cringe. Baldi then starts to whine that using magic in a sword fight is not fair. So Aruku swings his sword at him and tells him to surrender if he doesn't wish to join his boys. There, Korn reveals that she's sensing another reaction nearby, and that thing is coming their way really fast. Turns out, a great number of fall boars start running and jumping around the group. It confuses Aruku because usually their habitats are found deeper in the woods, not at the border. Moreover, these boars are crushing whatever is coming in front of them. As one of the boars is about to hit Usado whose guard is down, Blurin jumps for the save and knocks that boar out. Whereas Susan is trying to electrocute as many boars as she can. Looks like someone is preparing dinner. Unfortunately, one of the boars manages to get closer to Suzanne as he's about to hit her. So Usado immediately runs in front as a human shield as he hugs Suzanne. And the very next moment we see both of them sent flying by that boar. But in the midair, Usado manages to heal the hero so she would receive less fall damage. Let's not underestimate that hit because Usado and Suzanne Legit fell like one kilometer away. Worst case is, they fell right onto the edge of the forest and ended up falling down the river as they are now getting swayed with the river. As they are being carried away by the water, luckily Usado uses his brain and remembers this place because he was here before when he was being chased by the grizzly bears. But unfortunately, with that memory, he realizes that they are about to fall from a huge waterfall. Hence, he tells Suzanne to take a big breath as they are about to hit a roller coaster ride. After taking a huge fall, of course, Usado takes the whole damage and ends up knocked out, and the very next thing he sees is lying on the bank of the river while Susan is carrying him to somewhere safe. The girl tells him that she's the kind of woman who always repays her debt. But Usado tells her that it is okay now, he feels fine, besides, this looks quite embarrassing, carrying a guy while being all wet. So Susan immediately pushes him back because she doesn't know that the boy is awake. I mean he could have stayed that way for a bit longer but Usado decided to act all macho. Plus, Usado explains that he's the one who pulled Suzanne out of the water, and he didn't get knocked out, instead he was just resting a bit. But that is there, Usado sees a cut on Suzanne's face and asks to heal her wound first. After healing her, Suzanne starts apologizing to Usado because of things turning this way, but Usado tells her to not worry, besides he's glad that they fell together. Either this kid is in love with her, 
or he's very focused on Suzanne's protection. Moreover, Usado explains that this place reminds him of the old days, because this is where his captain tossed him for his training. Plus, he warns Suzanne to be careful because there are tons of monsters stronger than fall boars here. The duo then realizes that they are actually stranded here, they have been separated from their group, and now they are left with no food, not even a day's worth. So Susan highly suggests to Usado that they should leave this forest as soon as possible, if it is as dangerous as he says. But the boy tells her that it is going to be dark soon and the weather doesn't look too good, so it would be wise of them to find a safe place to take shelter and then head back tomorrow morning. Nah, Usado is just trying to get her laid in the wild. Since Susan has no option but to agree with him, she asks Usado how they will find a safe place. Yusako then brags about how he slept in the trees last time, but he's not so sure if Suzanne can actually do that, probably because she had a luxurious life of cozy beds, and it turns out to be true. Susan explains that she has never climbed a tree before, though it is on her to-do list, but she was never allowed. Seeing her sad face over this thing confirms Usado that she really is a sheltered daughter of some rich family. Well, because of that, Usado points out a small cave and tells her that they can take shelter there. Besides, it is perfect because they won't have to worry about rain there. Things start to get interesting as Usado tells Suzanne to go into the bushes and change her clothes. She blushes and asks Usado to not peek. Anyways later, to prepare their dinner, Suzanne puts her hand in the river and uses her shock magic. Thus, a great amount of dead fish starts to float. This impresses Usado who was concerned about the dinner. Don't know how the chemistry works here, but usually while putting her hand on the water, Susan should have also gotten electrocuted. Okay, we get it, you had daddy issues. Usado Loki understands her point of view and tells her that it is not wrong to feel that way. This surprises Suzanne because usually people would get disgusted after seeing her having such a selfish mindset. And for a moment, she feels like Usado is being completely disillusioned with her and fair enough, she won't blame him for that. But Usado tells her that he actually means it even though he always felt the same way, he wanted to change his mundane everyday life and his mundane self. So one way or another, he feels like he sounds the same as Suzanne's perception. In case you don't know, mundane is like an NPC. Usado then starts to open up about the time when they first arrived here. He was always worried about not getting in her and Kazuki's way. But look at him now, he is a part of the rescue team and who thought that this healer boy would become this useful. Usado further explains that he has steeled his resolve to protect Suzanne, Kazuki, and the people of this kingdom. Even Suzanne agrees with the protecting part since she is a hero after all. And so, Usado offers Suzanne to join up as they both will save the people of the Linger Kingdom together. Even though this has nothing to do with their old world, they will protect the place they have made for themselves here. Suzanne is actually surprised to see how Usado has gotten to be so dependable. Whereas, Usado says that Suzanne has become more human now, Back in the days, she was like some untouchable flower. Hearing that surprises her because she always noticed Usado being so cold towards her. Yup, they keep on talking about how they have evolved for a couple of minutes, and now they feel nostalgic to be back. Susan also likes how they have gotten into a closer relationship. Hearing this, Usado starts to turn red, and before his intrusive thoughts start to kick in, in the rainy weather. The boy tells himself not today and heads off to sleep as he says his goodnight. Susan gets the hint of his Eiffel Tower rising, she even starts teasing Usado for getting shy. But the boy totally ignores her and keeps pretending to be asleep as his snores get louder. Susan then expresses that she is glad to have this talk with him, the girl was really looking forward to it. Is it safe to say that these two don't regret getting separated from the group and ending up stranded? It then cuts to the morning where the duo continue their journey to head outside the forest. And not gonna lie, Usado has no idea about the exit, he is just following his guts. The boy tells Suzanne to keep her guard up because this place is surrounded by monsters, thus they need to be prepared. After moving a couple of steps, the duo hears someone's presence nearby. So Susan immediately takes her sword out there, they both notice deadly red eyes shining from the bushes. But upon getting a greater look, that deadly beast turns out to be none other than Blurin, who immediately jumps on Musato. This cheers up the duo, and not just Blurin, they even reunite with Aruku who seems pretty exhausted. Vileja passes out after seeing these two. Looks like someone had a wild night in the forest, surely he didn't bone Korin. While Usado is healing Aruku, the guy tells them that the bear cubs suddenly ran off while they were searching in the forest. 
so he did get the hint that Blurin probably had picked Usado's scent and gave chase, that is why he started to run behind the bear. Susan is impressed at the bear for being this talented, but that is where she notices that Blurin hasn't stopped. He then takes the group towards a rocky side as he is sniffing the ground. Basically, Usado gets the hint of the place, so he tells Aruku and Suzanne that this is the den where Blurin used to live. But it is all ruins now, his parents were killed by a giant snake monster. Hearing this tragic story makes everyone emotional, so Blurin walks back to Usado and tells him that they should leave now. It makes Usado feel so wholesome because he realizes that Blurin had decided that his place is by his side. And just like that, Usado has finally found a home and family. Susan then offers her hand to lift him up as she tells him that it is time to head back to where we belong. Well, that was actually pretty wholesome, but did Aruku just leave corn behind or something? 